Can you hear that? I've fallen and I can't get up. We can hear that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really okay, great. It's my so best sample. <laughs> like it's set up for you and Maddie. Okay, all right. So look, so today, you know, like last time we did our uh, presentation, I showed you how to make the song crazy, but using the sampler in general, how to get your head around the sampler. So now we're going to look at some of the techniques that you can use for um, sample manipulation or audio manipulation, but within the actual um, uh, arrange page itself. So not having to put it into a sampler, but also just, just use it in this page. So the first thing we're going to look at is truncating. Okay, so truncating. What is truncating? Do we know what that is? First off. Say it again, you're gonna to have to speak louder. Shortening the audio file. Yeah, it's 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 chopping the audio file up into little bits. So if I was to um, truncate this piece of audio here, then I would I could either do it with a being pressing the T button and bringing up the tools, and then I could get my scissors and I could cut like that. And now that has been truncated. Okay, press T twice again, brings back my pointer, and I've now changed the length of it. But I can also do it, if I take the bottom right corner, I can then move this to whichever point I want. So the first thing is, one of the things that they're gonna mark you on is truncating, how well your truncating is. So for example, um, this is probably quite good truncating. And I can. Right, if I was to do it like this. And I can. Yeah, you can see it's not as good, right? Because I've basically chopped out the and audio. I can. I've got a little click there at the end. So it's really important that we, well, when we um, truncate, that we make sure that we, we can zoom in and we make sure that our start points are good like this, right? So another thing we can do is we can add fades. Now there's some a few places you can add fades. You can either use the fade tool, press T and then A, and then you've got a fade tool, and then you drag from inside the audio outside the audio like that and that'll fade out and i can and that'll get rid of anything but i can change the length how long it fades as well so and i can you can see that if i just if i make that even longer i'd say just take this whole bit of audio and move it like that you see and i can get up you see how slow that fade was Right, we can change the length of that as well. We can change the kind of um, the curve of that by just clicking it like that. So that you can see it's going to it's going to go down quicker and then gradually fade out towards the end. And I can get up. I'm not sure I can use this sample for much longer. I'm going to find another sample just because that was driving me a bit bonkers. That will do. Let's try this one. I'm, you, see, you can notice that I'm using vocals. Yeah. Because this is what you're probably going to be using the sampler for. It's actually quite a good thing to for your composition is to chop up the samples in the in the vocals. Now this uh, presentation, I'm going to I'm recording it, so I'm going to put it up on the shared space after I've done this and after I've edited it a little bit. Okay, so that's the first thing that we're looking at is the uh, truncation feature. So you basically want to be able to do that. You want to be able to use the truncation feature. Um, let me just try to get this into the right place. Uh, mute that one out. And then let's do this one. Let's do this. This machine will have eyes, ears, and a voice. Okay. All right, that's a good sample, isn't it? This machine will have eyes, ears, and a voice. Okay. So say I wanted to loop something, okay? What I could do is I could highlight this area. Now, I love using the, ma the matrix tool, the marquee tool, for highlighting pieces of audio because it, it basically overrides the loop here. So you can have a loop on it. But if I press the space bar now... Boy, 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 boy. It'll just play the, the bit on the marquee. Voice, voice. Voice, voice. Right. And then if so, anyway, so look, I've highlighted this. Now, I can, now uh, when I click on it with my pointer, it will separate it out. So if I just make a new track and put that on that track for the minute, mute this one. So we've just got this. Voice. Okay. And say I wanted to put it to a, a beat. So I'll just, I'll just quickly put in a, a beat now, just so I've got something that I can edit to. And I can use a, uh, an Apple loop for this. You can stop me at any point and ask me a question. Okay, I'm quite happy for you to ask me questions if you're not if you're not sure on something yet. Anyone? Anyone? No. 
Okay. Okay, that'll do. Right, so I'm just putting that in, and this is purely just so I can get things in time, okay? I've set this to 120, it's 120 BPM, and I want this to fit into a quarter note. So what I can do is, first thing is, if I get the bottom corner and I press the Alt key, you can see that this icon that's shaking changes. See that? So that is now time stretching and compressing. So I can make that fit to a quarter note like that. Voice. Yeah. And now, and I can go to the top side of it. I can go to uh, this side. Um, Voice. Voice. And I could now copy it by just copying it like this. See. Voice. 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 And then if I wanted to chop it up some more, I could say put it here, and I could I could change the length. And. Then if I press L, it will loop it. So, voice, 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 voice. Yeah, so like that, you see? So. Voice, voice, voice. Yeah, you can do that sort of thing um, with the L button, it's called. Cool. So, and then you just, if you just click on the top half, it will stop that, like that. Voice, voice, voice. And then I can maybe put the voice back here. Um, but on this one, I could stretch it. So instead of making it shorter to put it in time, I could do it again, press the Alt key, changes the icon, and I could double the length for that one. Okay? Voice, 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 So I might, I might, sounding okay, but I'm going to, I'm going to uh, make it go to about here, and then I'll copy this one with the Alt key again, and I'll make that half the speed, the time again. Like that, and then I'll press L, and that'll come. Voice, 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 voice. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so basically, I've just taken that voice, and I've chopped it up. So let's just carry on with that. So I'll just copy this another um, four bars, and we'll come into the second half. Um, now I'm going to pitch it. Okay. So I'm going to take this voice here, uh, start here, and I'm going to pitch it. Now I can pitch it up in this, up in the top left here. So if it says here, transpose it, I can highlight it and go right. I'm going to go up 12. Right? So voice, 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 voice. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, which is really silly, obviously. Uh, let's put it down 12. Voice, voice, voice. <laughs> yeah, you see, that's a bit silly too. So let's just sort of cut it in between. Let's just do, let's do plus seven. A plus seven transpose is like going up a fifth, okay? Because there's 12 notes in the scale and seven is halfway between, so that's a fifth. Voice, 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 voice. Yeah, and then I'll do the same there and I'll maybe go, I mean, I might use this um, sort of in a rhythmical way. So chop that up and then... These are all going to be, you can see it's all plus seven here. So I can go, that one is actually going to go up. I'm going to go up two on that one. And on this one, um, I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down a little bit. And then this one, I'm going to go lower, right? But this one, I'm going to spread it. I'm going to span it out like that. But I'm also going to, even this one, I'm going to double that in length as well. Okay, so it's lower and time stretched, okay? Voice, 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 voice. Okay, so it's a little bit choppy at the end there. So let's just get the timing right. So I'll give it a bit, a bit more space. So something like that. So a bit longer maybe on those. Voice, voice, voice. Let's take it out a loop. Yeah, I quite like that. Okay, so um, voice, 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 voice. Okay, so what I've done there, I've truncated it. I've looped it. Right, so another thing I'm going to do uh, now is I'm going to show you how to reverse something. Okay, so this is, let's say if I wanted to put one, I put this one here like that. And if I double click on it, yeah, and we go to the file here. And if you go to functions, you can reverse it. Like that. Ta da. Voice, 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 voice. 
Oh, oh, you can see what's happened there. Is that, see, this audio, this is a good point, actually, because this, is, this can go a bit wrong. You can see I've reversed it, but it's also reversed the one I used before that I copied. So it's like I've copied that audio, but I've, but I've essentially I've reversed both bits of audio. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to reverse that back. OK, and I'm going to go from this one and then I'm going to have to do something else. I'm going to have to copy this first to make it a new piece of audio. So I will convert this to a new audio file. OK. And uh, OK, that's fine. So now that's created a new audio file. So if I click on that one, go to functions, reverse. And there it is. Okay, so that's uh, pitching and uh, that's that's reversing. So we've done the pitching, we've done reversing, we've done time stretching. I'm going to show you another thing now. If we, I'm just going to copy, make another track, and um, uh, I'll get one of these pieces of audio like that. I don't want to do it for too much longer because I know you can bend your head basically once you've got too much information going into your head well that's what happens to me anyway um oh for god's sake come on right there we go right so now let's just listen to this and if I, so bit crushing right bit crushing is something where you can essentially it's like a type of distortion so if you go to distortion here and you've got the bit crusher essentially what you're doing is you're lowering the resolution of the file okay so uh, i'll start with what it sounds like normally this is with no this is with no bit crushing at all voice okay now you see this is the wave this is a nice wave and i'm going to turn down the revolution i'm going to make it down to Eight bits. Voice, 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 voice. Let me just let me solo that out. Voice, voice. You can hear voice, the hiss. Voice, voice. Okay, that's that's what that does. Uh, if I can put it down to four bits, you can see it's starting to get a bit distorted now. Voice, 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 voice. Four bit is like what it sounded like in the eighties. So if you want an eighties sound, go four bit. Okay. Um, it's a um. So <coughs> let's put it up to eight bit. And then we can also down sample it, which is a bit more extreme. Um, you can see I've voice, voice, that's voice. just times two down sampling, times three. Voice, 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 times voice, four. Voice, 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 five. Voice, 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 to go latch so it'll go back that means when i finish doing it it'll go back to the original value so i'm going voice 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 okay voice 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 okay and i can edit that press the a button um just close that down for a minute go to bit crushing down sampling and i can smooth that out to make it a smoother file um smoother thing smoother effect so this is like a real time effect. Voice, voice, voice. Yeah, quite. Sorry, can I? Yeah. Can I, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, the bit crushing is a is an effect that you put on in the inspector. Is that right? In the inserts down here. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But it is and a then, sample, But it is a sample effect that Edexcel talk about. Okay. And then when you what so you can latch it, you can you can like real time automate it as you as you do latch. And then if you want to go back and as you said, you want to like just smooth it out. Yeah. You have to press A. A for automation. And then, you, and then you have to change the. Well, yeah. So we're changing the value here. So this is the value of one, and you can see it goes up to ten times. And if we watch it. But, but to get to the bit crusher, it's the you have to change the parameter in that drop down. Is that right? Well, you you change it here. Um, let me do it again. Let me show you again. Just so sorry, just to be really clear. Yeah. So you're instead of changing something like the volume, because yeah. you you can also automate the volume. Yeah. You you have to press A, but then you have to actually make sure you're changing the bit crusher by going to that drop down menu. Is that right? Yeah. So you have to put latch is automation control is automation record. Okay. Yeah. And what that does, uh, there's two types of it. There's, there's touch and latch. 
Uh, the difference okay. is touch will go back to your initial value before you started pressing the automation. And latch will keep the last value. OK, so I know that's a bit complicated, but OK, so let's just try that again. It was getting a bit glitchy. So voice, voice, voice. You can see how it's recorded it in there. OK, so now I could put this to read. So now it's not going to be recording any of anything, any automation. And I can smooth this out. Right. With just using the using the uh, the mouse like so. Voice, voice, voice. And then put it down again. So putting these nodes in, clicking these nodes in. Voice, okay. voice, voice. OK. So. I'm just going to show you a couple more things now because it can get a little bit out of hand. It's already getting out of hand. Let's be honest. <laughs> I've shown you loads. I'm just going to recap what everything I've shown you so far. Truncating. You know what that is? Yeah. Looping. Do you know how to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Reversing. A little bit complicated. Yep. You got that one? Remember to make sure that you copy the audio before you do it. Right? Pitching. Up here. This bit up yep. here. Yeah. Uh, bit crushing. Yep. Yeah. Time stretching. Yep. Yeah. That's Wait, when you get the bottom right corner and you drag it out when you, you click on it. and you, Oh, let me get out of automation mode. Hang on. Press A again. You get the bottom corner and you press Alt and it changes. You can see the icon changes. Yes. Got that? Okay. Theo has a question. Yeah, carry on. Uh, where do you where do you um pitch shift? Pitch shift. Okay, so say um let's just take this one for example, and I want to pitch shift it. I highlight here. You go in the inspector section here, and you got transpose. Right. There is another way to do it, um, but we're next. We're going to do. We'll do that at another time. Because, but basically, I can transpose it here. So if I if, if I just listen to this, right, and I wanted to pitch that up, and I wanted to go up an octave, I could just swing on here. Like that, up 32 it's going now. It's going to go ridiculous. Let me just do plus 12, because otherwise you can't really hear it. Yeah, okay. Compared to minus 12. Okay, that's going to sound quite cool to get that one. Yeah, I like that, I like that. So yeah, this is giving me ideas for making tunes. Um, and Tilda has one question. Yeah. Um, you know how you are highlighting the, the sample that you, you took the sample of the sample? How do you do that? Highlight the sample. <laughs> do when you, you mean? Do you mean to like when you have to reverse and you have to create a copy of it? When, when right at the beginning when he was highlighting a bit of the sample. Oh, you, you mean the marquee tool? tool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So what I have it set as I have you have two tools here, right? You have a a pointer and a cross. That you, well, this is actually usually set to pencil or something like that, okay? So I normally set my secondary tool to a marquee tool, which means whenever I press down the um, the command key, I get my secondary tool, yeah? Which means this is what I can use to highlight areas like that. And then I let go of it, bringing back my pointer, which means now I can separate, click on it again, I can separate out that piece of audio. OK, right. I'm going to show you a couple more little tricks. Right. So on this beat here, I'm going to I'm going to do a fade, but I'm going to do a different type of fade. Right. Called a uh, speed fade. Right. So I put create the fade normally and then I right click or control click and I can slow down the loop. Right. So this will sound like this. You hear that? Oh, I'll just solo it. Okay, it's like a record slowdown. Okay, so that's a cool, really little, cool little effect that you can put on that. Okay, right. And um, so I thought that yeah. was great. Can you just show me one more time how to do that? Okay, so what we do is I'll just I'll just go back. So you you, ba you basically get your fade tool, press T, get your fade tool, which is A, right? And then from inside the audio, you drag from inside the audio to outside of the audio like so, okay? And then you control or command, command click, right click, and you can change it from fade to slow down. Yeah. 
Okay. And that's and then there's one last thing I'm going to show you. Um, just because I'm here and I might as well. And it's like an effects unit that you can use. So you might be used, interested in it. Is there is an effects unit here. Uh, multi effects. Okay. And this is like, this is like a, a, a step. These are, these are really cool um, step time sequences or gates, which is a really, can be really useful for, for creating effects quite quickly. Um, so you've got all these steps, right, essentially. So it's like a step time sequencer effects unit, right? So they're really, and you can move this little thing around. Let me mix it half, so it's half. So you hear half the loop, right? And let me just let me just find a let me just get out. Oh god, I've just run out of bloody mouse power. Would you believe it? That's annoying. What? Well, whilst you're plugging that in, can I maybe ask a few questions? Of course you can. Um, this is you is. Would you always use this just on vocals? No, you can use it on anything. I mean, I'm using it on the drum kit as well. I mean, these are basically ways in which you can manipulate audio outside of a sampler. So essentially what you're using is you're using Logic as an entire sampler. Um, and all the things you can do, you don't have... See, see uh, one of the things that you're meant to be doing in Component 2 is sampling, right? Uh, but you don't have to use the sampler to be sampling even though you should at least have one example or two examples of using a sampler, right? What I'm doing here is exactly the same things that you could do in a sampler, but you're using logic to do it instead. Do you see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? How do you get that book done? Um, this, this effect thing. Yeah. yeah, that is, I just missed how you got into this effect okay. thing. Yeah. Right, well, let's hopefully I've got a bit more, there we go. So that's essentially, it's an effect, okay? So it's like it goes in the insert here. And if you go down to multi-effects, you'll have a step effects unit, okay? And this essentially works like, uh, like it's like a gating, it's like a gate kind of uh, thing. So it basically chops up audio for you. Um, so mixes, I've put the mix to half so you can hear the original audio as well. And then hopefully, let's just create a simple gate. So anthem gated space. There you go. That's pretty much. And you can change stuff like cut off. Um, move this thing around. It's a very simple, easy way to get sounds that could sound crazy. All right. And one more. So I just do one more. Okay. Just because this is the last one. And this is something which you can do on your entire mix, if you like. But there is another effect, if I can find it. Uh, where is show you the fat effects then. See, it's called remix effects. I don't know what it's called. This is similar. This is similar to the uh, step effects, but it's more like a filter. So it doesn't chop it up, but it just filters it out. But a great, this would be great for doing the effects part of the composition. Okay. Real time effects. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. I'm going to ask you questions. I'm going to ask you questions then. Right. Okay. So let's, what was the first thing that I talked about? What's the first control? Yes. And then what? Okay. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, and what did I do? Um, what's this piece of audio been? What's happened to this piece of audio? That's right. Okay, and what about this piece of audio here? What was that? Truncated and looped. Yeah, that's looped. Okay, and what's happened here? Voice, voice. Bit crushing, exactly. And um, what did I do to the loop here? Yeah. Slowed it down. Great. So you see, I think you've got it all. I think you've got it all. Now, what you need to do is somehow use this in a creative way for your composition. Now, it could be really good with the vocals, right? Um, it could be really good with. I mean, it's, if you get some of the vocals from this, from the track, from whatever it is you're doing, and then try and do something creative with it like this. It's excellent. That's exactly what the examiners want to hear. 
Yeah. Did you hear that? That's important. Yeah. Yeah. If you do something like this, they want to hear this sort of stuff. That will get you marks. It definitely will, because it's like you're showing loads of different techniques of sampling. Tick. Okay. And then we're going to do, we'll do another one of these um, presentations where I'll go a little bit more into synthesis. And then that'll be something else that you can think about. Right. Um, any questions? No? They all seem happy. Brilliant. That's great. Okay. Well, look, we'll leave it there. And um, So would you like them now to start trying to use some of these things in? Do they have a project that they could use these in? Yeah, but they should be all be working on their um, compositions. Ah, okay. Uh, so they need to be working on getting this kind of thing into their compositions in some way. That's great. So I've written notes on the board that are a total mess. You can decode them if you know any, if you have any problems like understanding what I've written. I've just written them for myself, really, to rem for me to remember how to do it. But you can put it in your own words and you can note it down somewhere so you can remember how to do these things. So when you come back in a week, you go, oh, this is how you reverse. So do make sure you get those steps written down somewhere in a book that you use for this course or whatever. Um, could you go then to your computers and try and put some of these things into your compositions? And let's say thank you to Thor. Thank you very much. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, okay.